Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. I am so glad you guys joined us on this recipe today because we're going to make the best roast beef sandwich with odd juice and tiger sauce, all kinds of neat goodies. I went to Bass Pro and bought me a meat slicer so I could slice it so thin that you can read a newspaper through it. It'll be just delicious. Temperature is everything. We'll talk about that in a little bit. In fact, they had three slicers at Bass Pro. One was 99, one was 129, what they call their premium, and then I think they had a commercial grade 249. Well, I just bought the one in the middle because it works fine. I've already did a couple of test cookings because temperature is so important to this recipe. And hiding down in here, look what I got. Private Selection Angus Eye of Round Roast. Now you can use a top round or a bottom round or an eye of round, and I use an eye of round for a specific reason. Come on over here, let's get started, and I'll tell you why. Now to make this homemade roast beef, we're going with the eye of round. And the reason I'm doing that, when I'm at the store, and this is just my observation, if you get a top round or a bottom round, and you can use those, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that, but the fibers or the grains of the meat kind of run in different directions a little bit. But the eye of round, it seems like it's all straight. And when I put it on this slicer over here and cut this way, I want to go against the grain to get the most tenderness possible. Now we're going to season this up. Even though I trimmed some of the fat off, I'm going to leave this flap on the bottom because it's going to become the top. Now what I got here is pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder, but not salt. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm going to use... Some stuff that was given to me by a young lady out of California and I don't know any, any other way to introduce her but say hi Jerry thanks for this she is my girl singers dad's twin sister does that make any sense that's the only way I can think of it and I did a big mistake the last time I did a recipe and showed this seasoning that I'm gonna show I gave credit to Gary because Gary her brother, which is my girl singer's dad, obviously, always cooks tri-tip out in the backyard anytime the band comes over there and, and we have a cookout, and he's so delicious. All right? Now, remember, there's no salt in this. This is just a mixture, and you can put any amount you want on, but just create a mixture of even amounts, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder on there because how we're going to salt this is by using this right here. Let me see if I can move this over to the side and get this on camera. Is that on camera, Sheila? It is. It's Susie Q's and it's a seasoning out of California that they reuse for tri-tip and it's so delicious. But like all seasonings, it's mostly salt. And I didn't want this to be over salty because I'm going to use the drippings to make my odd juice and I don't want it so salty that it's no good. So. We're going to salt it now, but this has all kinds of other delicious flavors in there. You can see the big cracked pepper on there and all that stuff. And I don't care if it has a little extra pepper because you know me, I love pepper. So we're going to turn that over and we'll put a good dose, even though a lot of people say you shouldn't season the fat of the meat. We're going to put that on top just like that. And we're going to use that as our salt for this roast. And one more time, just to make sure, this seasoning was given to me as a Christmas present by Jerry, Gary's twin sister out in California. I gave the credit to Gary in the last recipe, and he didn't give it to me. She did, so I kind of made a big goof. Now we're going to stick a probe in here, and I bought this neat little Therm Pro on Amazon for $17. And I've got Prime, so it was two-day you know, free shipping, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to put this in this roast at an angle. And this is so important. The three most important things to make in this roast beef is temperature, temperature, and temperature. We want to put it in at about a 45 degree angle. Instead of going in straight, we're going to put it in here until we get estimate that we're about in the middle. I think that's about right, right there. Now, if there's one thing that I don't like about this little thermometer thing, it's got a little flip out thing on the back, you turn on the gauge, it's so lightweight that it slides around pretty easy. I don't know if you can see that, Sheila. 
that. Can you see that little thermometer? Yeah, if you bump anything outside of the stove, because I'm going to run this in and leave this in the whole cooking time, it wants to drag that around. And this might shock you, because there's so many recipes on YouTube that cook these roast beef chunks of roast up to 140, 145. By that time, it is so dry and, and so nasty, and it's just absolutely unbelievable. You want an internal temperature of about 125 degrees when you slice it, which is nice and rare, and we can still make it medium and well done for everybody else. We'll show you how we do that, but we want to leave it rare when we slice it, and the only way to do that is do what all the chefs up in New York at a lot of them big famous restaurants do when they make these roasts for roast beef. We're only going to cook it to 105 degrees internal temperature. That's right, 105, and I'll show you why after it comes out of the oven. So we're going to take this, put it in this roasting pan right here, put it in the oven at 300 degrees until this little alarm goes off on here at 105 degrees. I'll run her down there. And we're only going to cook it at 300 degrees to 105 internal temperature. You're going to love this recipe when it's done. All right, we transferred it over to our little roasting pan here. It's got a rack in the bottom that'll hold it up about an inch so we can get our drippings. Even though you can't see it, the fat flap is on top. We'll trim it off later before we slice it, but we want that juice to run down over the meat. Let's get it in the oven at 300 degrees until this alarm goes off at 105. I know that sounds early, but you wait till we get done and I'm going to show you what it does. See you in a little bit. Well, all right, our Angus Eye of Round Roast is in the oven. We're listening for that little thermometer to go off at 105 degrees. But in the meantime, we're going to make a tiger sauce to go on top of our sandwich once we stack it up with that sliced roast beef. You are going to love this tiger sauce recipe. I can't take credit for it, <laughs> but I also can't tell you what restaurant it came from because I'll get in trouble. So let's get started. First of all, we need a half a cup of mayonnaise. This stuff is so good. You can put it on your prime rib, roast beef sandwiches. You could even, you know, grill up a steak and smear a little bit on top. We're going to put in a half a cup of sour cream. And as I always mention, we'll put all the ingredients below the video. Just click on the word show more and it'll pop open the whole recipe. You do not need to go to a website to get it. Then we're going to put in a half a teaspoon of dry mustard, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of chives in there. Let me get that all mixed up. All right, now we're going to add a half a teaspoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice in there. Mix this up. You wait till you try this tiger sauce. It is outstanding. We're going to put in two tablespoons of prepared horseradish. This is just regular ground horseradish. Man, so good. And you can always add more, but let's start out with two tablespoons. That way just about everybody will eat it. And it won't be too spicy. <laughs> oh man, this is so good. Now in this little cup right here, I have a little bit of Dijon mustard, maybe a half a teaspoon, and a splash of Worcestershire sauce in there, and I mixed them together. So let's go ahead and put that in. Our Dijon mustard and Worcestershire sauce. I wish they renamed it so everybody could pronounce it like me. And then one more ingredient is I've got just a pinch, just a pinch of salt and pepper. I mixed it together here. Just a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Not a lot. Just a, like a little pinch of salt and pepper. You're going to love this stuff. It is so good. All right. This is all mixed together. Let me check my phone over here. You know what I do? Every time I get a recipe that I really like, I email it to myself. Then I just open up the email and it's there for sure. So everything is in there. Because once in a while, you know me, I forget stuff and I got to go back and tell you, oh, by the way, don't forget to put in this or that. But this here, let me give this a little bit of a taste and I won't put the spoon back in there. <laughs> I know there's some people that watch, make sure I don't do that. Wow. That is absolutely... 
delicious. And that's how you make the best tiger sauce on the planet right there. Now when our roast gets out of the oven, we're going to slice it up. We're going to put this on top with some raw onions and a few other goodies. We're going to do something to the buns. That's all coming up. But now we just got to sit and wait for the roast to get ready. All right, when this hit 105 degrees, we pulled it immediately out of the oven. It's already up to 106. You can hear the little alarm going. So I'm going to increase the alarm to 110. So if it did happen to raise to 110, it would go off again. I'm going to move it over here and let it rest, and then we're going to make our odd juice down here. But it's at 106, and I'm going to take you on a little temperature trip. You won't believe this. See you in a little bit. All right, we got some drippings down here in the bottom. We're going to add just a little bit of beef stock, maybe, oh, about a quarter cup, kind of stir it around. And my flour is over on the side. I don't really want to make a roux. I just want a pinch of flour. I'm going to step off camera and go get it here. Just a pinch of flour. Not even enough to say a quarter of a teaspoon. Just a pinch in there is all I want. That's going to react with that and make it start to thicken up some. Let me turn this baby on high here. Get her going. Got so excited about that, I forgot about the, the cooktop. We got our roast resting over here on the side. And we got our little thermometer set at 110 degrees. So with, if and when it hits that, the alarm will go off again. And now in this little beef broth and the drippings and a pinch of flour, we're going to add, see, see the alarm go off? It jumped clear to 111 degrees. Can you see that, Sheila? Yeah. Went to 111. So I'm going to move, I moved it up to 115. So I'm basically telling the probe, tell me when the internal temperature hits 115. Remember, we pulled it out of the oven at 105, and it's already 111 degrees. Let's see if it makes it to 115. I'm taking you on a little temperature trip here with this roast, because I want to show you something very important. And the next time you make your roast beef sandwiches, they're going to be fantastic. But what I was saying is, in this little, not roux, but in this broth, I'm going to put in about a quarter cup of onions, a quarter cup of celery. One little guy in there wants to hang on all the time. And a quarter cup of real fine diced carrots. They're all diced up real fine. But I'm going to put them in there. And I'm going to start simmering these vegetables in this broth. Because we're going to make an odd jus to dip our sandwich in out of this drippings and broth and a pinch of flour onion, celery, and carrots. Now, as soon as we get this simmered for a good five to ten minutes, it really start to get it thick. And then we add some more beef broth to get the consistency we want. We're going to strain it through this strainer into this bowl over here and just save the juice. And believe it or not, I might take the vegetables and put them in a, in a bag or something, put them in the refrigerator and put them in a soup or something because I hate to waste anything. But we just want the flavor out of these veggies. Be back in about five minutes when this is simmering real good. All right, I'm trying to work on my au jus over here, but looky here. The alarm's going off again. It's up to 115 degrees internal temperature. That's right, just sitting out here on this plate, cooling off at room temperature. We're letting it rest. Do not cut into it. So I'm going to run this up to 120 Certainly it wouldn't go from 105 clear up to 120, would it? Well, we'll see in just a little bit. I'll set this back over here. And in the meantime, I'm going to add a little pepper to this au jus, but I'm not going to add any salt because I got quite a bit of salt from that seasoning on the outside of the roast. And with the drippings and any salt that's in some of this beef broth, we want to be careful not to get it too salty. Now, you want to use the best quality beef stock, not, you know, beef, what's, what's the other one called? 
beef broth. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to use beef broth. We want to use beef stock, which is real good for cooking and making a stock, what we're doing. And buy the best and most expensive one on the shelf. Or you can make it at home. Make your own beef stock if you want, but you want a good quality beef stock because the better quality this is, the better quality this is going to be. And same with your wine. That's right. We're going to give it a little splash of Shotgun Reds Touch of Sweet Wine in there. Maybe about an eighth of a cup. And you want to have a wine that you'll drink with your meal. Well, we'll drink this with the meal because it's the best stuff ever. If you go to shotgunred.com and click on the wine link, you'll find out where you can buy it in Tennessee. And I'm sorry, but unfortunately, it's only available in the state of Tennessee. We're in about 50 or 60 different locations right now. And I wanted to get this in here when it had only been simmering about three minutes because I want to let it simmer for another four or five maybe six or seven minutes to get all the alcohol out of it but boy you ought to smell this coming up out of here it's wonderful again we didn't put any salt in there because we'll taste it later but let let's let this simmer for another four or five minutes and let's keep an eye on our little alarm over here and see how high our little roasts go we'll see in a little bit well all right I poured the rest of my beef stock in here and I'm gonna let this reduce for a long time to see if I can't get it to reduce by at least a third. But there is that annoying little beeper again. Looky here. It hit 120. It's just laying on this plate at room temperature. And it's already went up 15 degrees from when we pulled it out of the oven. So, to make this thing shut up, I'm going to turn it up to 125 degrees on the alarm. So in the internal temperature, if it does, it'll go off at 125. And we'll see what we will see. Let me get this little lightweight thermometer back over here and we'll get back to reducing this broth. See you in a little bit. Alright, this is cooled down enough that I can touch the outside and run them juices that have came out of that roast into our au jus. Alright, let's take a look at our thermometer. Wow! 122 degrees. Can you see that in there? Or you want to get a close up? Is that better? Can you see it in there? 122. Now remember, we took this out of the oven at 105 degrees, and it's already 122 degrees. That's 17 degrees more than when we took it out of the oven. This proves two things. All the roast beef recipes that you see online that say cook it to an internal temperature of 145, well, it's going to be 170 by the time it rests. Or if you got your Thanksgiving turkey and you cook it to an internal temperature of 165, it's going to be 190 and you're going to eat dry turkey. Take it out at 150, 155 at the most, and I guarantee you, if you leave a probe in your turkey, it'll go by 165, which is your safe temperature. 122. Now I was shooting for an internal temperature of 125 degrees, and if it stops a couple degrees early, that's close enough for me because I want it rare. I don't want it medium rare, I don't want it medium, I don't want it medium well. All that stuff can be cured later on and I'll show you. But right now we're at 122 degrees. You can bring that up a little closer um, to the cord. Oh, this cord what now? Yeah, there you go. Can you see it? Yeah. Is that better? Right there you go. Alright, can you see it now? Yeah. My little director over here, she's telling me exactly how to tilt that. Watch I know. I know. Well, hey, you're on the camera side, girl. You tell me. You're the director. All right. Oh, see now it's cooled down to 120. So it's on its way back down again. And that's what you want to do. You want to wait till it peaks and then goes starts to go back down before you cut it because if it's continuing to climb and you cut it it's still pushing out juices from the inside until it reaches its temperature and starts back down. Well, no, wait a minute. I don't know what I did. It's back to 122 again. Must have been something. Must have been my hand touching something. But anyway, it's at 122 degrees. I'm going to simmer this au jus a little bit, and then we're going to strain it. And then we're going to slice up this 122 or 124 degree, whatever the internal temperature is, eye of round roast, and I'll show you what it looks like, like what it's supposed to. Nice and rare. Well, all right, we got all of our carrots and celery and onions strained out of our au jus. Let me stir this around a little bit. I gotta tell you something. 
Back when I was playing clubs years ago, I was only about 19 years old. Man, they gave us meals and rooms and drinks free as part of playing there. And we had some prime rib one night, and they served it with this odd juice. I thought that's what the waitress said, odd juice. So for years, I called it odd juice. Could I get some of that odd juice for my prime rib? And they'd bring it and never say anything, but it's odd juice, which actually stands for with juice. I tasted this. It's got just a touch too much pepper, maybe just a hair for Sheila. It's okay for me, but I always try to cook for her as well. I had to add a little bit of salt to taste, and I'm going to give it a pinch of sugar. That's just me, because I like that kind of stuff. Wakes it up, you know what I'm saying? Let me dissolve this sugar a little bit. Oh, yeah. All right. Our roast has come back down to 120 degrees. We're going to slice it. We're going to move this au jus out of the way. And you're going to see the most beautiful roast beef you've ever seen. See you in a second. All right, our roast has been resting for about 45 minutes. I'm going to cut this little fat cap off the side of this because I did want it on there while it was baking. And I did a little math. Instead of stopping at 105, if you stop at 108, it'll go to 125 degrees internal temperature but this is probably good enough for me we're getting ready to find out do our little bass pro meat slicer oh lord that is so nice and rare in the middle look at this now, for all of you that like medium and medium well, hold on. I'm not leaving you out yet. I'll show you. Because Sheila likes her well done, or at least medium. She will eat it a little bit pink. Man, that looks so good. Sliced against the grain. Let me turn this off. All right, we got our au jus nice and hot over here. And what I'm going to do first is I want to make a little sandwich. This is a like a sub roll that I bought that was already pre-sliced. But I actually want to pull it completely apart, both of them. There's a reason for that. I'll show you in a minute. I'll put the bottoms right here. Now, mine... Oh, I got to stack it. Thin, rare, just delicious. Don't cook your roast beef to death. Shut it off at 105. If it gets to 110, you're already borderline going past 125. Now, for Sheila, I'm going to take this thin sliced roast beef. I'm going to put it in the au jus over here enough for her sandwich nice and thin sliced and I'm gonna simmer that over here for a little bit because it's so thin it won't take long to bring it to a medium or even medium well consistency like she likes and in the meantime I'm gonna finish up with my sandwich here now what you want to do is you want to use raw onions thin sliced raw onions on top sweet Vidalias or any kind of sweet onion will work I just like Vidalia onions then over here guess what we have we have our tiger sauce which is just so wonderful because this is as good as prime rib it deserves a prime rib style sauce on top and I move the tops over here because the tops are the ones that get dunked now you remember that real rare looking roast beef that I got? Look at Sheila's. It's got a nice coating on it, but it looks well done. It might be medium, but it's so brown because it's been in the au jus simmer. It's camouflage. That's the word I was looking for. But that looks doable, don't it, Sheila? Yeah, it does. See? As long as she's not biting into strips of rare meat, which I absolutely love, 
Look at that. And, that, and you can cook it in here as long as you want. It doesn't matter because it's still thin sliced, still tender, and all the other stuff with me. These are the bottoms. That's why I had that over there. I couldn't figure that out. And let me do this here now. Now let me move a little of this juice off to the side with some of that meat in there as well. And now we're going to give this top a dunk. That's what we're looking for right there see that wow that goes on there like that now you can double dip these you can dip the bottom bread and the top bread but we're gonna cut this at an angle and there you have it the world's greatest roast beef sandwich sliced nice and rare because we didn't overcook it a tiger sauce that's fit for prime rib or this sandwich odd juice made with them vegetables and stuff. I know this recipe took a little while to do today, but it's so well worth it. And now it's time to take this little corner right here and kerplunk it in the odd jus. Mm. That is fabulous. I'm sorry, I just had to finish chewing that real slow and we didn't have time to leave it on camera. I hope you enjoyed this recipe because we tweaked it a little here and there. Look for all the instructions underneath the video because I'll tell you exactly the temperatures and slicing and all that stuff. And it is just so delicious. I really hope you enjoy our recipes. We appreciate you tuning in and watching us here on YouTube. Hope you subscribe to our channel. A little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over there in just a little bit. When it does, click on it when it says subscribe right next to the word subscribe. Click on that little bell. I tell you all that every time because I hope you do it. Because then you'll be notified every time we come out with another recipe. In fact, we'll put some more recipes over here on the side you can click on. And is this the most delicious roast beef sandwich you homemade roast beef sandwich you ever made if it ain't it ought to be this is steve hall in nashville tennessee along with pretty miss sheila and you know what sheila i forgot which one is rare and which one's medium no you don't <laughs> anyway we'll find out which is which and she'll get the right one we'll see you. say good night sheila. sheila we'll see you next time right here on cooking with shotgun red try this recipe Plus, you can take all this extra roast beef, slice it, put it in a vacuum pack bag, and put it in the freezer, then take it out and thaw it, heat it up with a little bit of au jus, put it in one of the, or au juice, like I used to say, put it in one of those hoagie buns and have it whenever you want it. So go ahead and cook one up. And we did the eye of round, not the top round or bottom round, but you can do any one of the three of them, and it turned out fantastic. I know that's kind of stretching the end of the show, but I just feel good about this recipe. We'll see you next time. Bye, Sheila.